Satan's Eleven is our series. I am using this because, oh, recently, probably two or three months ago, I began to realize that I thought I understood how Satan was working. Uh, I thought I understood that in the 60s, 70s, 80s, and through there, that that was as far back as he went with the United States of America. And then I got, I had to have heart surgery, uh, 8th of July, and then it gave me plenty of time to think and study. And as I began to think and study, I realized I was wrong. And it began to have a traumatic effect on me. Uh, I'm thinking, well, just how far back does all this problem that we're having today in the United States of America and around the world, as far as that goes, but most of the world has been in it hundreds of years before the United States of America. Satan worked on Europe and everything way before he got to us because we just started in 1620 with the pilgrims and the Mayflower. But as I began to realize how far back what's going on today uh, is a result of hundreds of years. And I think, how could that happen? Those people came to America for religious values. The pilgrims. They left Europe for religious values because they had lost them all in Europe. And I thought, oh, okay. Then America, where we had all of our settlements here and up the east coast of America, you see it all the way from Maine down New York, Pennsylvania, all up and down, you know, New Jersey, all those states up and down there, you know. And, and I began to look and I began to think, you know what? You know what? They seem to be a, a very liberal group of states. And especially New York, you know. And I thought, hmm. Do you really think that maybe, and I got to thinking this. I thought, do you think Satan had somebody planted on the Mayflower? In 1620 and got off the boat there. And he was just waiting for his opportunity and his time and his turn to begin to change America. And I thought, boy, I don't know. And then I got to studying some more and studying some more. And then what began to happen from uh, 1620 to 1824 and all the things and suddenly, bang, I seen it. Suddenly I seen what Satan has been doing to America ever since they landed. And then I really began to see it as the intellect, the intelligenta of Europe began to follow the Mayflower over here a couple of hundred years later. And the people that the devil used in Europe to change them and to change God and get God plumb out of the picture and that's just about what's happened in Europe but anyhow they came to America and they wanted to get God out of America too and I thought I didn't see that all my life I didn't see that and now that I seen a little bit of it about Six weeks ago, now, from that time on, I've been studying it and studying it and studying about America and studying what's going on in America today. And suddenly, I see it. It's the leaven of seven. <laughs> another, another terminology for Satan. Seven footprints of Satan. I read a book one time about how he operates. Years ago, young in the ministry and it it really scared me I thought surely he's not that powerful 
Surely Satan is not that subtle. Surely he's not that conniving. But he is. Everything that I read in the book that sent chills down my back back then, Seven Footprints of Satan, I should have woke up then. I should have seen then what is going on, what's happening. But now that I know, and now that I'm studying more and more on it, I can hardly... How do I tell you this? I can hardly see... I, I can see everything that he's doing. I can just see it plain as a picture, what he's doing, what he's already done, what he did in Europe. I can go all the way back to the Garden of Eden and I can see what he done in the Garden of Eden. And me and the daughter, we had a discussion and said, y'all remember the Garden of Eden, Adam and Eve, uh, and, and the, you know, the serpent in the tree uh, and trying to... Uh, Convince Eve that it was okay to eat of the knowledge of the tree of good and evil. Uh, so anyhow, uh, she said, how long did it take the devil to work on Eve? I said, well, how long did it take the devil to work on Adam? And you, you get to thinking like that, and you'll, you'll start getting on the right track about what's going on and what he's doing. And you'll see how he don't do everything just like that. He gradually does it. He gradually leads you into sin. He gradually leads you away from God. He gradually tells the United States you don't need God anymore. He's gradual about it. And he knows where to attack. And my question is, where did these people come from that it seems like the demons are possessing them and they are wanting to get rid of God in America. Where did all this come from? Well, you can study history and you begin to see how the changes came about. And then you just have to look at certain people and certain individuals that for some reason or other were promoted into certain positions of authority that went to work taking God out of everything. Because you cannot have a society that they want to have without getting rid of God. The whole objective is to get rid of God in the world. And they've done a good job at it in most of the world. China, India, look at all the deception that has took place with all those people and all those governments and all those people, I mean, all those nations. Look how deceptive they have been. And I believe I believe somehow they become demon-possessed in certain areas of their life. Yes, I believe in demons. You don't study the Bible if you don't believe in demons. But anyhow, and I believe demons possessing certain emperors and certain rulers and certain kings and, and uh, on, on and on for, so forth and around the world. And if you really look back, and we've been studying on Wednesday night, the book of Revelation... And all that's done is add to what I'm seeing. And I'm, I'm beginning to think, oh my goodness. All the time I thought it was just smart emperors that suddenly gained power. Or somehow they inherited the power. And this, that, and the other. No, now I am seeing Satan and his co-workers possessing these people that are taking God out of everything. And it's not, it's not a pretty picture. I had an uncle that was very religious. He wouldn't have a television in his house. The first TVs come out, he wouldn't have one. He said, no, it's of the devil. I said, Uncle Lee? I said, there's a lot of interesting stuff on that television. Of course, I was talking about Lone Ranger because that's one of the first, you know, programs. And I'm watching Lone Ranger again now on one of the TV channels. <laughs> Ain't the same when I was a kid. But I couldn't figure out what was wrong with TV because Uncle Lee said, don't bring it in your house. 
Now let me ask you what's wrong with TV. Now, it took a long time for me to understand what's wrong with TV. They're replaying some of the old sitcoms that they used to have years ago on the TV. And, and I used to like to watch them, you know. Of course, you know, with very little wrong with Lucy, you know, and some of those programs. But uh, now I'm watching some of the programs <clears throat> that I used to watch as a young man. And I see, I see how the, the directors and the writers of all the scripts and the actors, I'm beginning to see how they gradually put things in for you to watch that you wouldn't think there was anything wrong with. And I remember when the kids were little, and I can remember the grandkids when they were little, and we would be watching some kind of movie. Now, this is years ago. They were, they're big now. You're, when they were little, see a, see a bad word said on, on a movie, on TV. And the kids would say, they'd look at me and they'd say, oh, Grandpa. And I'd turn it off. I don't care how good the movie was, I'd turn it off. Or switch channels, you know. And they were happy with that. And then they got bigger and bigger and bigger. And there was more, more bad language on television, you know, and more and more. And it's getting where I don't care what you're watching, you know, Snow White, they'll be doing something bad in it. And, uh, and I'm thinking today, I thought, well, you know, I guess we just reasoned with the kids after, after they got older and said, kids, you know, after all, that's... We all know that that's wrong, don't we, kids? We all, let's go ahead and watch and see how the story ends up. I don't know what I'm going to do because I'm watching him work like I've never watched him work before. And everything seemed to be all right as long as you could put the church in one category and the world in another category. Guess what? Guess what? The church has been compromised. What do you mean, Brother Larry? What do you mean, been compromised? <laughs> you can't already tell us apart. And you know what I'm talking about. All I'm trying to do through this series of messages is let you know how long it's been going on, let you know some of the tactics that Satan is using, how he puts a little leaven. You know what leaven is, you know, makes things rise, no rise, all that, you know. It, it gets in something and it, and it changes it and just takes a little bit. Don't take a whole lot to change things. We need to learn. It don't take but a little bit of what's wrong and what God warns us about. It, it just takes a little bit of us going ahead and accepting that and doing that till the next thing you know, our whole lives have changed. And all of our generations coming up, they're going to be changed too. That's how serious it is. Sigmund Freud stated that religion, you ever heard of Sigmund Freud? Huh? Freud? Yeah, everything is wrong with psychology. Everything is wrong with everybody because of the way your mother treated you. Or the way your dad treated you. Well, look at him now. He stated, this is in the beginning again. This is a long time ago. In the beginning again, he stated that religion is comparable to a childhood neurosis. He believed that belief in God was a mental disorder. Now then, you got somebody like that, an educated, one of the elite. You got somebody like that that Satan has already convinced that there is no God. You don't need God. And all the people that are following God are a bunch of mental patients. 
and you start putting him in charge of a psychology department and the next thing you know, all the people that want to eliminate God out of the world and follow Satan, next thing you know, all that group gets in behind Freud and then it really takes off. Just a little leaven. Just a little bit of you letting Satan have his way in your life will turn into this real quick. And not just you, all your family. Huh. Yeah. If I were the devil, I would have called America asleep. 911. Was America called asleep? <laughs> I watched the documentary on it yesterday. It actually made me cry. What made me cry? That I seen how easily America can fall. That's what made me cry. And I seen all the people in New York when that tire fell you know, as long as it was burning up at the top. Now, they both fell, but the first one. As long as it was burning up at the top, people were standing around the base. They were all over the place. They were just watching it. You know, just looking up, talking to each other. Well, what's going to happen next? You know, what, what's going to, are they going to be able to put that out? Oh, yeah, they've got... They got uh, these sprinkler systems and everything. It, it, it's going to be put out. It's going to be all right. And they were all huddled around. No big deal, you know, just a couple planes crashed on the top of two tires. And nobody really knowing what was going on. They were watching and all of a sudden, the top of the, one of the tires started imploding. Y'all seen the pictures? And it started falling. And you never seen like the screaming and the running and the hollering. And you never seen like the people that were killed at the base because they were standing around looking up. Couldn't get away. And then all the smoke and all the chalky dust, I guess, from the bricks and mortar began to choke them to death. And the ones that found some doors to get into and some shelters to get into, they survived. The others didn't. And I kept looking at that and I'm thinking, how easy, how easy it was to get two jets, you know, and there was four all together. We knew about the Pentagon too, you know, but anyhow, and we knew about the one that was supposed to really tore up the Pentagon, number, flight number 77, where they took over the cockpit and crashed the plane. <sighs> and it, it just, it, it touches me to see how America, <clears throat> the shape they're in today. And it touches me to see so many lives lost in, in all the wars, World War I, World War II, and so forth, and go, you know, just go on. It touches me to see all the people that gave their good sons' lives for freedom in America, and now Satan is trying to eliminate it. And sad to say, I've read the back of the book. And guess what it says? Before very long, the whole world will experience seven years great tribulation the wrath of God. He's going to change the whole world. He's tired of Satan and his leaven. And I think the biggest thing he's tired of is how his churches have been compromised. And another thing that has got to be a thorn in his side is his own people, the Jew. The Jews still don't believe in his only begotten son that suffered and died on the cross for their lives and their souls and, and the all the world's souls and they won't believe in him they say no well two thirds of them will be destroyed in the great tribulation 
and the judgment of God. One third will be spared because they'll change their mind just before that third's eliminated. They'll change their mind. Ain't that something what it takes to change your mind? Ain't that something what it takes once you get drawn in by Satan's leaven and you get caught up in Satan's leaven? Ain't that something what it takes to change you? I'm going to tell you, the majority don't get changed. The majority are heading for a lake of fire forever and ever and ever and on and ever and ever. It will never end. I'm studying so much, I don't know how to break it down quickly. In this new society that is going on in America right now, okay? Hey, they've done came from England. They've already came from Europe. Hey, they've already infiltrated the United States of America. This philosophy, all of this elite education system, all of this about removing God from our society because God and his people are the only ones standing in the way of people like Hitler taking over the world. But I've already read the back of the book, and that's the thing that bothers me so much. The world does allow somebody like Hitler, the Antichrist is his name, it's his title, it'll be somebody, it'll be a man, but he's going, he's going to be possessed of Satan and he's going to be able to do miracles and he's going to be able to appear like light in the midst of darkness and by, he's going to be able to have all the answers to all the economic questions in the world but he is Satan in a human form and he's going to he's going to come now, I would say, okay, churches, it's time for y'all to listen. It's time for you to start listening to what God's saying. God said in 2 Chronicles seven fourteen, he said, If my people, which are called by my name, will humble themselves down and pray and seek my face. And then watch this. And turn from their wicked ways. Church, that's you. Turn from your wicked ways. If you'll do that, I will save you. And your nation. But I've already read the back of the book, Sam. And the back of the book says we won't do it. You know what the scariest part for me is? I've got loved ones and family and friends that are right now needing God in their lives. And I feel like I have got to somehow lead them to Christ before it's too late. And I've almost waited too long in my life to know these things. I wish I'd have known this when I started out. I preached a lot of revivals when I started out. I went after them. You know, people were, they, when they come in and I had my red coat on, they almost wanted to leave. That was hellfire and brimstone coat. I preached hellfire and brimstone plain to them. I don't know how I would change it today. I would just tell them what I'm telling you. And I'm going to tell them. And I'm going to send them. Our Wednesday night literature. Now I'm going to say you need to read this. You need to read this. And I'll send them just exactly what we start studying about on Wednesday night. And if, if they don't change. I've done all I can do. But anyhow. But the church. The church. The church. 
has got to have an awakening. We've got to have a revival. We've got to get serious about this thing. We've got to quit being afraid of what's going on in the world. We, we can't be afraid to go up and talk to somebody about Jesus Christ. And we, most of all, we can't be afraid to go up and talk to them. You're a sinner. Oh, no, 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 Brother Larry, don't ask me to go tell somebody they're doing wrong. Please, no, I don't want to do that. Well, talk to your family first for crying out loud. Can you talk to your family? No. They're the worst ones. They'll just turn right around and point a finger at you and say, I remember when you done exactly what I'm doing. And they'll shut you up so fast and you know it. You know it. You say, well, I'll start to work on my kids. Well, your kids will say, well, listen, i seen you do this. i seen you do that. I heard you do this. I heard you do that. And they will just smother you with all your sins. And probably it's what's wrong with a lot of us. We're afraid to be a witness because we're afraid of what they'll tell us. But you've got to get over that. You've got to get over that. You've got to go above that. You've got to get to where you take the word of God and convince them what God says. And you tell them, Jesus is who I'm talking to you about. Not Larry Rouse. Jesus is who I'm telling you about. Not somebody else or not somebody that sits in church with me or anything like that. No, I'm telling you about Jesus. Now y'all want to see you condemn him. Because you don't have a leg to stand on until you can condemn the one that died for you. And you can't do it. And he will be your judge. I won't be your judge. He will be your judge. In this new society, man would no longer need to concern himself with sin. Why? Because psychology would become the religion of humanism. <laughs> you don't know what that is. Uh, come on Wednesday night, I'll explain it to you. What's going on today? And the manner in which society addressed everything would change. It would tell you why criminals commit acts of injustice. It'll tell you why some fail in school and some don't. You don't know anything about that? Ho, oh. ho. Freud is from book to book in schools. Psychology is taking over anything religious or godly or guilt from sin. Uh-uh, you won't see that in school anymore. Every facet of behavior will be labeled and diagnosed with a therapeutic solution for everything you've done and the Bible won't be included nowhere. We'll write our own books and we'll leave God out of all of them. Huh. How, come, how come you didn't see it? Because if you've seen it like I'm seeing it, you're on fire and you can't put yourself out. I just wonder when that surgeon cut my chest open and looked in there and worked on my heart. I just wonder if he could see the fire in my bones. I think I'll ask him next time. Might be a good introduction to him. I'm going to say, I've got fire in my bones like the prophets of old. But he said, I, I wanted... I wanted not to serve God. I wanted not to do what God's asking me to do. But he said, I couldn't because I had fire in my bones. And that's where I'm at. Mm. Won't be popular. Because mm -mm. you have to identify sin as it is. So that won't be popular. Because you got this going on. So... You now have Satan's leaven of Darwinism and humanism all mixed in with the economic system. Oh, oh my goodness, I see so much. The economic solution widely embraced today is socialism. 
You ever heard that word? Socialism? <laughs> Humanism? <laughs> uh, you'll be able to see your little boys and little girls all go to the same bathroom together. Because there's neither male nor female anymore. You'll see the system changing and changing and changing. It's going to get rough. The economic solution widely embraced today is socialism. However, socialism is not the end goal. It's a step. All of this is a step. Step one, step two, seven footprints of Satan. Step one, step two, step three, step four. He's very patient. He's hundreds of years patient. But he's coming. And now then, church, it's just about too late for the United States of America. And if it's too late for the United States of America, the freedom of religion that you and I have today, it's just about too late for that. Then who's going to be saved? You don't get saved without the word of God being preached. And if the word of God is not preached, if there's no preacher, who's going to get saved? It's the Bible. Nobody. To Karl Marx, socialism is the path toward communism. His theory taught that survival of the fittest also applies to governments. Socialism must replace capitalism. He wrote a book on this called Das Kapital. And now back to Sigmund Freud. He taught that anyone who truly believed in God suffered from a deep-seated mental problem. All you Christians are mentally ill. And the elite. And all of these systems that are coming to power already in your colleges and your institutions of higher education. It's already in there. All the professors are already incensed. They're already filled. And they're already on course for taking God out of the school and out of the institutions and out of America. It's happening fast. And where are you? You're just like I was. You're sitting here thinking everything's okay. All this will pass just like everything else passed. No, it won't. No, it won't. Why? Because the only hope for America is God and his people. And they've been compromised. Now then, I'm watching TV. And I look at some of these old shows and I never did, I never knew this until recently. I don't know how you understand that, but now I see all the sex driving sitcoms. I see all, everything that they've done that I laughed at 20 years ago. I laughed at it. Just funny, you know. I said, how can them people be so dumb? They weren't dumb. The writers were possessed and they all had an agenda. And they were changing you and me. And next thing you know, I accepted all the evil and all the wrong and all the sex and everything that was going on, all the nudity. My goodness. <sighs> all the permissiveness. You know what? Even TV's not real life. It's not. It's not real life. Oh yeah, we got sex trading going on. We got people kidnapping young girls now all over the world and they're selling them. We got it going on in the United States of America for crying out loud. Several years ago at the Lutheran Church, we seen a film on it. The police and the courthouse down here, the, 
ones in charge of this courthouse, they came in and all the ministerial alliance, we saw the movie. And I'm looking at that and I'm thinking, this can't be going on here. This can't be going on here. It's all around you. And the police know it. We've been compromised. So Sigmund fervently, in other words, he was on a mission too. He was on a quest. You take these people that are following Satan and are on a quest to get God out of society, they're fervent in it. They want to change it all. They want to change it quick, but Satan says, no. It's the frog in the water thing. Put the frog in cold water and gradually turn the burner up. Don't let him know that we're here. Don't let him know you got your hand on the knob and you're gradually cooking him and cooking him and he won't even know it until he's dead. That's the way he works. It's the way he works in church. I hope, I hope we're not too late, but I don't know where we're at in the end time. He tried to disassociate guilt from sin. We've got to change that. You know, if you sin, it brings guilt. So we've got to say, well, when you sin, you don't have to feel guilty about it. Just go ahead and sin, but don't feel guilty about it. He denied that there was a God. There is no God. You're mentally ill if you say there is. At bottom, God is nothing more than an exalted father, he said. The bottom line is God's nothing more than someone feeding a father figure to cling to. Needing a father figure to cling to. That's what that means. At bottom, God is nothing. You've got to have a father figure to cling to. You're mentally ill. Religion is comparable to childhood neurosis. Practicing religion is a mental disorder. You know, Sharon was a counselor, but she noticed too all their methods and all their counseling methods had to change. You, you can't tell them anything about God. You can't tell them part of their problem is spiritual. Part of their problem is sin. They need to get rid of the sin in their lives. You can't tell them that. Why? Because we're socialites and we're humanistic today. And if you want to be a boy today, you can be a boy. If you want to be a girl tomorrow, you can be a girl. And they can't nobody do anything about it. Is it too late? Try to change it. See what you get into. Just try to change the changes that have already taken place in America and see what you get into. I can see some people getting mad and angry. I can see that at the last presidential election. I can see that. I can see people wanting to bear arms and want to... You'll... It's too late. You have to do it at the voting booth with a secret ballot, and then you have to protect the ballot. If you want America back. But America, you're losing real quick. Anyhow, they got away from God and they got toward humanism. That's one of the reasons for her early retirement. None of them was health. But anyhow, the church's message for today is Romans 2, 23, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. 1 John 1 and 8, if we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth's not in us. That's God. 2 Timothy 3, 13, but evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. Is that happening? Now, my question I keep going back to, where's the church? Well, I have to ask myself, where was I 40 years ago? Where was I? How come I didn't see it? How come I was duped like the world is being duped today? How come I didn't see it? I don't know. I don't know. I wrestle with that. Here I am supposed to be a Holy Ghost, Spirit-filled pastor, preacher, evangelist. 
I'm supposed to be able to tell people right from wrong. I'm supposed to be able to warn people. Well, I warned some churches and they wouldn't listen. There's none of us perfect and probably never will be perfect. And I'm not making excuses for your sins. But there was only one perfect, and that was Jesus Christ. But we need, we need to be aware of the changes that are taking place in the world today. And the changes, let, let me put it this way. The changes that are taking place in the church. The changes that are taking place with God's people. It's time, churches, that we got back closer and closer to God than we ever have been in life. Because... You're about to lose your freedom in America. So many lives lost so that you might have it. It's a shame to raise up a generation that's going to let it go by the wayside just because they didn't stand up. Just because they didn't stand up. And let's bow our head and go to the Lord in prayer. Father, oh Father, help us. Can't do it by ourselves. You know we can't do it by ourselves. You know we couldn't live by the law. But God, your law is here to convince us of our guilt and of our sin. So help us to understand why it's here. And help us to understand, Father, that Jesus Christ died for us because we could not live it ourselves. We had to have the blood of your son, Jesus Christ. We had to have the perfect sacrifice, the sinless life. That was the only thing that would allow us to have the grace and the mercy that we could be forgiven for our sins. But God, help us to, help us to not sin. Help us just to understand that it's not good for us. When we go down a road of our sins, we may have grace and grace may abound in us and we may be on our way to heaven, but if, if we start dabbling in sin and doing the things the devil wants us to do, we're going to influence our families, we're going to influence our friends, we're going to influence our children, and, and, and they may not ever find that grace in Jesus Christ. Oh God, it is so hard for us to understand it is so hard for us to understand right from wrong. And when wrong, when we go so far with wrong, it becomes sin. And when it becomes sin, then God, the book of James says, then we're guilty. We must have the blood of Christ. And God, when we desire sin above living the way you would ask us to live and living the way Christ would ask us to live, when we would rather do sin and follow sin, God, than to follow Jesus Christ, when we make no attempt to live a holy life, God, then God, I'm afraid we never were saved in the first place. That's the old missionary Baptist in me. But God, you know all about us. And all I'm saying to us is, let's get back on track. Churches, around America, let's get back on track. God, send revival, send awakening to all of your people, God, so that we might win more to Christ, so that we might be able to witness to them and let them know that what they're doing will send them to a lake of fire because you're a judgment God. You're a judgment bound God. Judgment is coming, God. I know it, I see it, I believe it. So help us be the witnesses you'd have us to be, Father, that they might be saved. And we all end up in a place you've got prepared for us with your Son, Jesus Christ. Thank you for your word. Bless all the message today, not only here, but online, God. Help us, oh God, to know truth. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen.